Hey everyone, Rooster Miller here, and today we're talking about the Kamvara 14. We're gonna do a bit of a first impressions video of it. And we're also gonna ask the question, after 14 iterations, is this still a Kamvara? And why did the Kamvara basically become a fan favorite over the years? And we're also gonna compare it to the Kamvara 13. There's some big changes between the two shoes. So uh, let's get into it, eh? And we're back. So we'll talk about the Kamvara 14, 14 versus the Kamvara 13. So you're gonna notice a few changes to this shoe to start off. We turn it straight over. Previous Kamvaras were pretty much flat across the top, where this new Kamvara actually has a bit of a, a concave. It has a, probably a little bit deeper and wider channel. The strategically placed rubber is basically the same. There's really not much difference in it. The power run foam, the power run foam is a tad soft that you can actually see. It's a little bit more pliable versus the, the 13. The 13 was probably a little bit more denser. Um, and you will definitely know there is a little bit of difference in ground fuel between the two shoes if you ran into them. The other thing you also notice is that the Kamvara 14 weighs a lot lighter. Not much. You can feel it's a little fraction heavier in the 13. So in the 14, it's only 200 grams or 7 ounces, whereas in the 13, it was 204 grams and 7.2 ounces. But the biggest, one of the biggest differences, you know, is actually in the heel and the forefoot. It's still a 4 millimeter drop, but what you got here is you've got a 31 stack in the, in the heel and a 27 in the forefoot versus a 28 and a 24. Big difference in the, in the stack height. And you'll definitely notice that in the right of the shoe. The, the uppers on the on the 13 is a engineered mesh, which is basically found on the Endorphin Speed 2. Uh, it's very similar. Whereas this is a different mesh altogether. It's um, it's what you would find probably even on the, the Pro 3. So the tongues are both are basically they're both gusseted in the shoe. They're still gusseted in the shoe. But the difference is that this tongue is like a medium padding, where the tongue on this, you know, got it, where the tongue on this is actually very thin. And what it has is just a pad up the center of the shoe. It's just a straight pad to stop any lace spot across it. They've actually made this shoe even more minimal. And the tongue and the gusset actually goes into a four foot booty construction, um, very much found on, on the version eight of this shoe. But the hero of this shoe, which is, it's mind blowing, when you when you do this with this shoe, is that the inner the inner sole sock liner? It's seven millimeters of Power Run Plus. Now Sakoni has a few foams, Power Run, which is what this is, Power Run Plus, which is basically found in your you know, Triumphs and so forth. Then you got your old Power Run PB, which is found in your Speeds and your Endorphin line, which is a PB base. And now they've got the HG. So they've really thrown a couple of foams really talking about a couple of foams at this shoe. But if you've got 31 in the heel and 27 and then throw a seven mil sock line, it actually adds up, it's nearly going towards a legal limit of 40 millimeters if you put it in there. So I'm not sure whether the, the stack height includes the, this liner or not. But I actually took this liner out and put it in the 13. It changed the right of 13. Yes, it took up a lot of volume because it's a lot thicker. And then I took the 13 and put it in the sole of the 14 and you, it's a big difference. This is really the hero of this shoe. So over the years, I've run in a few Kambaras. I've run in the three, I've run in the four, and I no longer have those shoes. I wish I did, I'd show you on camera. But one I do have is the six. The six is probably one of my favorite shoes up to this point. Um, it was, I did contemplate running the, my first marathon back in 2016. I just love the way the geometry of the shoe with that podular heel design, which allowed for individual roll through. Um, it didn't slap you down. It just rolled you through nicely from heel to toe. And the, the triangular lug system that would actually, these used to be about three to four millimeters out from the actual, from the shoe. Uh, now they're worn flat and they actually start to feel dead, but they would actually push in and give like an additional cushioning. It's uh, This was actually probably one of my, the favorite Kambaras out of, out of the whole lot. 
Uh, I had two pairs of two pairs of sevens. Sevens were interesting because they took away the triangle lug system, uh, which I believe to be probably one of the detriments to the shoe. If they kept the, the lug system, that triangle instead of going at this the chevron pattern, would have been a lot better. Um, the eight, the eight was basically the same as the seven on the outsole and so but the, the foam felt a little bit a little bit softer, a bit more rubbery. Um, but the upper was the best part about this shoe. It had a, an internal booty construction through the whole lot, very similar to what we got now with the four foot of the 14. We then went on to the the 10, which was absolutely my least favorite shoe because the, the, the EVA foam firmed up and the geometry of the shoe changed so much that it just slapped down. It slapped down so much that it actually caused a little bit of shin splints. Um, didn't actually do all this shoe very much at all. Um, it was, yeah, not my favorite, not my favorite Gambara. Uh, the 11, the 11 was pretty much the same as as the 10. It's just that the, the I, I just, I did give it a try. I did use it a lot for walking. I just really couldn't get into this shoe. It was, it feels heavier. Um, and one thing I did love before, which is wearing with jeans. I, I thought it was fantastic. Now, obviously the 13, which we showed before, but the 13 I did like because it actually went back to more of the traditional style of the early Gambaras. The, the heel is a little bit more rounded, it just doesn't slap in, so it allowed you to roll through. It had the, the better, the way this channel went up the center, it actually helped guide the, guide the foot through. And the piston, that had these, these way they done the, the system here, it actually reminded me a little bit of like the triangle piston lug system that they had in the earlier versions. I just wish they'd actually put it back in. Uh, it would be fantastic. Uh, and obviously now on for the 14. But what you do get in this shoe is a smoother ride. For some unknown reason, this just rolls better and it doesn't really run like a Gambara. It runs, well, to be honest, it runs like, runs a little bit like the Axon. Now the Axon's a lot heavier shoe, but it's a four-wheel drop. It has the, the, the power on EVA foam. It's just got a lot more rubber and it's a lot heavier. But one thing you do know is that the rocker in the Axon is very aggressive and that actually, he did actually play up on my Achilles. With this, does it? It's more of a mid rocker that actually goes in the shoe, whereas previous Gambaras never had a rocker. So this basically concludes our first impression review of the actual Gambara 14. It's a completely different Gambara, in my opinion, versus all the previous iterations that I ran in. It's a higher stack height. It has a rocker geometry, a midfoot rocker geometry. It has a really awesome upper now. It's even a lightweight, even uh, upper. The tongue's it's still gusseted, but it's a more minimalist tongue with a bit of padding down the center. Um, I find the tongue comes up higher and just sits better on your foot. Um, the geometry of the midsole has changed with that, that little bit of a sway there and the, and the channel's a little bit wider to add a little bit more guidance in the, in the, in the shoe. The sidewalls that come up on the outside, whereas all previous Gambaras generally had a like it's like a little bit of a, a medial posting on the interior of the of the shoe. It wasn't really a stability shoe, but just added a little fraction, a little bit of support. So, so the question now remains is that after 14 iterations of this shoe, is this still a Gambara? And I guess the question you have to ask within the question is, what is a Gambara? So next part of this video, we're going to focus on actually what a Kambara actually is, uh, why did it have a cult following, and is the Sakoni Kambara 14 even a Kambara? So to answer these questions, we're going to use a promotional video from Sakoni. Uh, we're not going to use the whole thing, we're just going to use snippets, and I'm going to try and fill in the rest of the voids where I can. The concept or the brief behind the shoe was to build um, a really lightweight training shoe a shoe that a runner can do his or her everyday training in, but also uh, their faster workouts or races in as well. So based on that comment that Nick Hill just said about the design concept, that doesn't really tell us what an actual Kambara is. They give us the overall design concept. This croc fits that design concept. It's a lightweight daily training. You can do up tempo in if your foot's strong enough. I've seen people run a marathon on a pair of flip-flops and thong or thongs, and with a pair of socks, they don't get you shaping. Section, Spencer White is a biomechanical expert. He's going to talk to us about why the Canvara has that four mil heel to toe drop. One of the features that makes the Canvara different from a traditional running shoe is its heel height. It actually has a lower heel relative to the forefoot than a traditional running shoe. What that means is as your heel hits the ground, your foot lands in a slightly more plantar flex position, giving you a quicker transition from heel to forefoot. 
Of course, what distinguishes the Canvara is its light weight. It weighs less than eight ounces, and the main reason for that is only a minimal amount of rubber is used in the outsole, just enough to provide traction and abrasion resistance in the heel and through the forefoot. So now we're going to hear from Chris about some of the design concepts that went into the Canvara. And this, this is actually quite interesting. The beginning inspiration for the Canvara came from this great cushioning triangular lug story that we have on the Jazz Original combined with the Endorphin LE2 racing spike, which is great lightweight, and very minimal upper. Bringing those two together was a great way to kind of start for the Canvara. So it's very interesting what Chris just said about the combination of these two shoes, the Jazz Original and the Endorphin uh, LT Spike. Now, the 14 actually has that very similar upper. It's only taken 14 iterations to actually get it on the upper. So that's a plus. So now we're back at Chris, and he's going to talk about another very key design aspect, which I believe makes the Kambara the Kambara incorporate a little bit of the technology from back in the day. The triangular lugs on the Kinvara act the same way as the Jazz original. So you have this heavy groove detail that runs around the perimeter of the triangle and allows the triangle to deflect into the midsole and gives the runner that great cushioning sensation that they'd want. So okay, another key aspect there from Chris. Start to paint a bit of a picture here. So it's a lightweight daddy trainer, it's a four mil heel to toe drop. Um, that's exceptionally lightweight. That is sub eight ounces. Um, it has a piston lug system because it is a combination of two shoes. Um, the next section was actually explain the fourth and last key element to what I believe actually makes a Kambara Kambara. Akane is introducing a new technology called ProGrid Light in the heel of the Kambara. Provides a little extra cushioning and keeps the heel centered as your foot hits the ground. ProGrid Light. Okay, so that's the last thing about this that we're going to actually use because it goes on about the upper and explains about the upper. But if you want to go watch it, you should be able to pick up here what the links are. But it's basically the Sakoni uh, Pro Grid Kambara. If you type that in, you'll, you'll find it. So, what were the key aspects that actually make a Kambara a Kambara? Well, it is the sub eight ounce lightweight shoe. It has a four mil heel to toe drop with very minimal rubber uh, and plastic cages and so forth. Uh, it has a heel unit that helps center the heel, and it has a piston lug system that propulses in and gives more cushioning. So, because it was a combination of the two shoes, the Jazz Original and the Endorphin LT. So, there's only ever been two shoes over the over the period of running that's come close to the Kambara. One of them is the Hoka Hapana, uh, and the other one is the Puma Fast 500. And the interesting part of interesting part about the Puma Fast 500 version three was one of its co-designers. See if you can pick it up. Heel to toe drop in four millimeters for the Fast 500 V3, in some respects, encourages more. Oh, does someone look very familiar to the start of the video? This is Nick Hill. Nick Hill was one of the project or design managers or whatever his actual title was with the original Kambara. He left, obviously, and went to Puma, and they came out with the Puma Fast 500 version three. And I don't can't remember how much. He had but as a product line manager um, it's understandably that why this shoe would feel very similar. Um, Nikhil is also over at uh, Brooks Running at the moment and we are seeing some very very interesting uh, shoes coming out of that camp at the moment. So to answer the question about why did the Kambara become so popular and why did it have such a cult following well there's a bit of a, a rumor or myth out there that the shoe come from the you know, the minimalist footwear movement, like the McDougal book, Born to Run, and the hell of a Temuera tribe ran barefoot or with very, very minimal footwear um, and still be able to run these great times. Well, I tend to disagree with that. Um, I tend to believe that the Kambara actually came out from a massive gap in the market, especially in Sakoni's range. So, the, because Sakoni actually had a shoe called the Hotori, it was a zero drop, barefoot, running shoe it was a very minimal it had like a foot shaped toe box very much i think it was i think it was nearly before ultra's time um and then they had racing flats which was basically your type a's and your fast switch fast switch being the stability model then there was nothing absolute nothing and then you had the the, the i think it was the triumph then you had the the ride maybe even an omni or something shoe back then and they were heavy they had 
plastic shanks and, and cages and gels and, and all that and so forth and you know and sewn overlays it was just a heavy shoe nothing was light and so the Convara came out of that massive gap but what made it so popular amongst a lot of people is that all the other brands also had heavy shoes like the Nike Rome was heavy and it had a cage and that a lot of the Adidas's had torsion bars and New Balance which I used to run in the the 759, which later became the 880, had plastic T-beams in it and so forth. And they had like little gel pods back in them and they were, and lots of rubber, lots of different densities of rubber, you know, and they were just so heavy. It was like strapping a couple of Coke cans to your feet and going out for a run. That's how heavy they were. And along comes the Kambara and completely changes the game because what it gave you was a lightweight daily trainer. You could just do everything. It was like the one shoe that fit all. Um, and that's why it became so popular. Unfortunately, over time, the competition did start to catch up to what the Kambara was. So as the competition started catching up over the year, we started seeing a lot of shoes come out that were similar to the Kambara, but weren't actually quite Kambara. Um, so obviously we mentioned the, the Hapana before and obviously the, the Puma Fast 500, um, but also the Sketches Rage Ex Excess is a very similar feel to what the new 14 is. Um, the Clifton V1, the same concept, was a lightweight daily trainer um, that you could do everything in the time. Like, I absolutely love this shoe. So even New Balance had like the Zante and the Tempo, which comes under the same category. Even now with the Rebel, still falls under that lightweight daily trainer um, that you can do everything in. Even Ciccone's own Speed 2 technically falls under the same umbrella as a lightweight daily trainer and technically competes with it. But there's certain things that are unique that made the Kambara unique. With the Kambara Pro coming out soon, which has an eight millimeter drop and a a carbon a carbon a teardrop carbon plate, and I think it has all the three foams in it. It has the the Power Run PB, the the Ever the Power Run, and the 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 Power Run Plus sock liner in it as well. So even that technically isn't a Kambara. Is the Kambara 14 still a Kambara? Well, the answer is sort of. So it has a four mil heel to toe drop, which is one of the key aspects. It is a lightweight daily trainer that you can do your up tempos and so forth. Another aspect. Um, does it have the heel centering unit? No, but what it does have is the, the groove at the center that does it. So you can sort of give them that one as well. But what it does miss is the piston or triangular lug system that was from the combination of the Jazz Original and the uh, Endorphin uh, LT spike but it does have the uplift very similar to it, which is fantastic. So what it means is that you can change the stack height of the Kambara up to 40 millimeters and it'd still be a Kambara. You can put extra stuff on it, like the pull tab here, or you know a less tongue, a fat tongue. Prolog, please don't put that back in, Prolog. But you can add to it, as long as it stays under that sub, sub eight ounces, it's still a Kambara. But the things that made the Kambara were all the four categories that we mentioned. So this concludes the first impressions of the Kambara 14. Um, hope I've answered a lot of questions out there. Um, it is a little bit of a long-winded um, review, uh, but if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.